Every time I smoke a cigarette, yeah. <laughs> I'm up there just looking out. We're still in jail, you know, and it's it's still the free world out there, you know. So I look out, out all the time, actually, just see what's going on, you know. I've been in here for what, six months this time, so it don't seem like that long to some people, but in jail, that's a long time, you know. I've been booked into this jail 86 times. You've been booked into this jail 86 times? Mm hmm The majority of them were violations, though. Violation of probation, violation of probation, you know. I hear you, but it's still 86 six times. times. Yeah. I think I, I, I probably got in the low 40s, maybe. That part's normal for <laughs> Cobb County? Yeah. Well, I mean, Glenn, yeah. Glenn, how many times you been booked in this jail? Over 100. <laughs> What? Over a hundred. The la last year, how many assault charges did you catch? I don't know. I've caught 40 this year. <laughs> it's very hard not to fight. I'm probably the most violent inmate in this jail. I've calmed down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Glenn Mantooth. I've known for getting in trouble. I raised a lot of hell with the police. I've had five hour standoffs. I've had two hour standoffs. I've had 20 minute standoffs. SWAT teams come got me a couple times. They had to flood the river to get Glenn out. He stole a chihuahua. <laughs> and a gun at the same time. And a gun. Time. When he pulled the gun out to show everybody, he pointed it at everybody. Everybody in the room was like, oh my God. Because Glenn with a gun is dangerous. <laughs> Fight all the time. Do a lot of drugs, do a lot of time. Other than that, just raise a lot of cane. <laughs> I love him. Glenn's my buddy, but he's unique and he is wild. <laughs> Why are you so crazy? <laughs> That's all I've ever known is violence. I've been locked up February 25th, well, click 21 calendar years. Been out a year and six months since I've been 18. I like it on the streets. It's just, it's hard not to beat somebody up or act out or be getting high. My adopted parents, which is basically my mom and my dad, if they told me no, then it was hell. I'd throw stuff at them chase them around the house, tortured next door neighbors. I was reckless, didn't care about nothing, skipped school. Got kicked down Cock County High, Morristown East, Morristown West for fighting. I started off drinking and smoking weed at an early age. And when I met the meth, it was on. I'm likable. You know, but on the drugs and the alcohol, I'm very dangerous. You know, very dangerous. My adopted parents, they kept a 38 stub nose loaded. When you a racist? I was growing up. A lot of my friends is in the Aryan Nation, but my sister, she got some little mixed kids. And you know, I didn't figure that they needed to see me that way growing up. I took my three minute beat out and rolled on. Let me get this in there. My birth father was a wild man. He snapped handcuffs on the police, had standoffs with them, and raised a lot of hell, a lot of hell. I always said, whenever I grow up, I'm going to be just like my daddy. And I'd laugh and I'd giggle about it. And I turned out, that's what I did, was turned out like my dad. You think your son's going to grow up be like you? I hope not. But you know, I've done missed 11 years of his life. 
Booty getting high, committing crimes. My son, J-Rod, he lives with my adopted parents. He's just starting to hit his violent age to where, like I was. J-Rod's basically walking my same foot, footsteps because J-Rod's got a bad anger issue. If you tell him no, then he's gonna fight you. If I'm locked up and he hits my mom or dad, then you know, I told him I will lock you up. Well, there's nothing you can do about it. Well, yeah, there is. Just because I'm in jail don't mean that, they, that I don't got no say so what goes on in your life. What you're saying is what a loving father would say. Yeah. But everybody that said that same shit to you, you said that and did, did it anyhow. Yeah, it's really interesting. What a crazy cycle because your answer is to do exactly what your parents did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I was arrested, I was 13 year old. My son, J-Rod, he's 11. I've talked with him about how jail is and not to grow up and be like me and my dad was. I said, well, make something out of your life because this ain't the life you want to live. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> We adopted Glenn when he was around four year old. Glenn had a real bad start in life. His mom and dad both were on drugs, big time on taking uh, Tulio. That's uh, uh, paint thinner and stuff. Yep. And that stuff really eat their brain up. That's about all you can say for it. Alcohol real bad and they didn't want him. This picture is in preschool. Glenn had been passed along from different foster homes, and they uh, said that this was to be the final stop, and if he didn't make it here, he would be the youngest child ever placed in a group home. I couldn't handle him. This is what he looked like when he came to us. Glenn was pretty mean, and so it was a challenge. At four years old, he was very mean. <laughs> sort of. He, he's done some things, I'll tell you. I've, I've, uh, we've dealt with it, we've seen it. One night he called and said, hey, Dad, come down here, we've got a deer. Well, Mr. Glenn got a knife and jumped on this deer, I swear. He jumped on that deer and stabbing that deer to death. I've seen him go down the road and set fires. <laughs> and we had to we had to put him out. Just things I can't Glenn would do, you know. This was Glenn at uh, 13. He was a good kid, but you know, he had them moments where he just just turned like Dr. High, they would just change, you know, his whole attitude changed. It was, it was scared, we was, I mean, afraid to go to bed sometimes, but, you know, we still loved the boy, and I still love him. <laughs> he raised his own sunflower. We took it to the fire. He won first place, and he was so proud of that sunflower. There was moments when Glenn was very, special. I always wanted to prove if you'd take a little child from a circumstance like that, you could do it good and you'd pet it and you'd love it and give it all these necessary things it needed and they would grow up to be perfect kids. But I blew that theory a long time ago and I have not seen that change yet. No. My dad is Glenn Anthony Mantus. I have the same middle name as my dad. He gave it to me. Coming back into the cell with the Barrett brothers, 
I mean, I've heard of people and known people with rap sheets, but these numbers are astounding. And as you're being just dumbfounded with how many times they've been incarcerated, they randomly just call the, hey Glenn, come on in. This guy, I didn't know we were gonna focus on him. This guy walks in calling himself the most dangerous criminal, talking about, you know, robbing people, beating people. It's just a way of life. He doesn't know. It's just the way it is, right? Getting his hair cut, seeing that he's got a, you know, white pride symbol on him. Like, this guy's also in a black street gang at the same time. Like, go figure. Like, how does that happen? How does a guy in this community acknowledge himself to have a white pride tattoo on him, but at the same time be part of what he called a black street gang? He even said that one of his sister's children was a mixed race child. He even tells you, you couldn't have hate for that kid. That's why he decided to change. This is where I'm going with choices. This is where I'm going with influence. Glenn always wanted to be like his father. His dad was talked as this big, bad, tough guy. Well, you know, who doesn't want to be a big, bad, tough guy? Maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but where I'm from, if you ask me would I want to grow up and be meek and weak or a big, bad, tough guy, I would have wanted to be a big, bad, tough guy. His father was one of the baddest men in the county. Used to hand everybody a beating. Glenn, his real parents, were in such bad trouble that he was taken away from them. He was brought into an adopted family that he's telling you about loves him, okay? But in loving him, it still didn't fix his problems. Now, has, has, has that not happened because it's, you know, nature versus nurture? Is it not happened because the community sees it as normal? When you hear the last name in the community, the man tooth name, everybody goes, oh boy, here comes trouble. Think about that. Glenn actually wore it as like a badge of pride. He liked it that he was considered the most dangerous violent criminal. But the thing is, the cops loved him. They gave him like special little purposes. Sometimes they'd let him walk back and forth from the annex, which was the smaller jail, to the other jail unhandcuffed. Now he'd have to go with supervision, but he didn't have to go handcuffed. I've heard stories. <laughs> like if you ever get in a fight with Glenn, you're <laughs> How does the most dangerous guy in the community not have to wear handcuffs? I'm not saying this, that the cops should get in trouble. I'm telling you because it's a community, because they're a family and because they know each other. <laughs> Maybe it's because he's off the drugs, but the reality is they're trying to treat these people like humans, treating them like you would treat a loved one until they do wrong. Then you hear about his son, who's this gonna be on the verge of getting in trouble, on that point to where you might not be able to save him. If his actions are just like his father or grandfather, how does this cycle stop continuing? Hi! 